If you have inflammatory bowel disease, you absolutely can become pregnant. For example, if you have ulcerative colitis, your likelihood of becoming pregnant is exactly the same as if you didn't have ulcerative colitis. The only difference is if you have a surgery called the ileal pouch anal anastomosis surgery for your ulcerative colitis. In that circumstance, your risk your chance of get, becoming pregnant is much lower. And this is something that you should discuss with your obstetrician, your colorectal surgeon, and your gastroenterologist prior to your surgery, if that's something that's a major issue for you. If you have Crohn's disease, your chances of becoming pregnant are probably no different than the general population. But again, this depends on how severe your disease is, where your disease is located, and if you've had any surgeries, as the inflammation and scar tissue may impact your fertility. The most important part of preparing for pregnancy as a woman with inflammatory bowel disease is to make sure that your inflammatory bowel disease is very well controlled prior to becoming pregnant. So family planning is really the key. You need to meet an obstetrician and a gynecologist who you like and trust, and you also have to discuss family planning issues with your gastroenterologist. The fundamental goal is that you want your disease to be in remission. That means that you feel perfect prior to becoming pregnant. You also want to make sure that your nutrition nutritional status is perfect as well, you're not anemic, and all of your vaccinations and all of your health care maintenance is up to date. And those are the, the cornerstones to family planning with inflammatory bowel disease. The reason behind that is, if your disease is in remission prior to becoming pregnant, the likelihood it will stay in remission throughout your pregnancy is much higher, and the likelihood that you'll have a safe pregnancy is higher as well. Whereas if your disease is active at the time of pregnancy and conception, the likelihood that you may have continued disease activity activity or a flare of your inflammatory bowel disease is higher. Additionally, we do know that inflammatory bowel disease in and of itself may be associated with some worse pregnancy outcomes, such as preterm delivery as, low as, as well as low birth weight. Therefore, it's very important as you're thinking about becoming pregnant that you coordinate with a high-risk obstetrician and uh, maintain your overall state of health prior to becoming pregnant and throughout. For the most part, when you become pregnant, you really should stay on the medications that got you into remission before you were pregnant. And the main reason is we feel that having worsened inflammatory bowel disease activity during your pregnancy is actually a greater risk to not only yourself but your baby than the medications themselves. By and large, most of the medications that we use for inflammatory bowel disease are category B for pregnancy, and that means they're probably safe to continue during pregnancy. These medications include the mesalamines, such as pentaza, colazol, or aprizo that many people are on, as well as the biologic medicines such as Remicade, Humira, and Simsia. Those are all category B. Where there's a lot of concern are the medications called azathioprine, or 6-MP, and because those are tr traditionally listed as category D. However, there have been many safety studies looking at this class of medicines in women with inflammatory bowel disease, and for the most part, they are safe to use during pregnancy, particularly if these medicines were very important to get you into remission to allow you to become pregnant in the first place. But again, if you have concerns, you should definitely speak with your gastroenterologist as well as your obstetrician before making any decisions regarding medication changes. If you have inflammatory bowel disease flares during your pregnancy, the first thing that you want to do is contact your gastroenterologist as well as obstetrician because there are many tweaks to your current regimen or there's also other medicines that we can add to get you back into remission as soon as possible because that's really the key in order to make sure you have a safe pregnancy as well as delivery and that you're protected as well as your baby because not only can a flare of your inflammatory bowel disease affect your pregnancy outcomes, but it can also affect your nutritional status which in turn can also affect your baby. Most women with inflammatory bowel disease actually choose not to breastfeed their baby following delivery, and that's due to a couple of misconceptions. One is that many women feel that breastfeeding will actually increase their risk of flares of their inflammatory bowel disease, which is not true. Women who continue to breastfeed actually have no increased risk of flares compared to women who don't. 
Additionally, many women have concerns about the safety of the medications they're taking to their breastfed babies. But by and large, the medications that we use for inflammatory bowel disease are safe for breastfeeding. But you have to discuss not only with your gastroenterologist, but your obstetrician and the pediatricians regarding medication safety. The two classes of medications that most women are concerned about are the biologics, which include Remicade, Simsia, and Humira. However, there have been studies testing blood levels of Remicade, for example, in the mothers, the breast milk, as well as the babies of the mothers who are um, who are breastfeeding, and there are no detectable levels of Remicade in the babies. Additionally, another group of medicines that many women are concerned about are the thiopurines, such as 6-mercaptopurine or azathioprine. And there have also been studies where they've tested the mother's drug levels of these medications, the breast milk, and the babies, and there have been no detectable levels of these drugs in the babies. So by and large, if you want to breastfeed, you absolutely should, and there are a lot of protective benefits of breastfeeding to your baby. But again, if you're concerned, talk to your pediatrician, talk to your obstetrician, and also talk to your gastroenterologist before making any medication changes.